Welcome back everybody to Charming Data. In this channel, you're going to learn all about data visualization in Python. So this week, we are going to focus on connecting to the stock market via API and pulling all the data into a line chart just like this one so we can see minute by minute how the stock prices change. In this case, we're going to focus on Tata Motors, which is, the symbol is TTM. And you can see that we are all the way up to 342. This will stop at 4 o'clock because here in New York City, the stock market stops at 4 o'clock. You can actually go in here even more and you can see 341, 342 every minute. It's going, it's going to update every two minutes, but it's going to give you, oh, it just updated. So it's going to update every two minutes, but it's going to give you one minute intervals going back. You see one minute intervals. Um, so here it's at 345, and soon you'll see how it updates to 350 and 355 if I remember to go into this while I'm doing the tutorial. But you just saw how it updated. You can also um, click on a legend, so click stuff out so you don't want to see them. Or you want to see maybe only closed prices or only high prices. You can play that as well. And you can double click on the chart so it expands back to, to all of them, to all the data back to 2 o'clock. Okay, we're going to do this using Dash Plotly, which is a magnificent platform in Python that allows you to create interactive data visualizations all in Python and upload them to the web as a web app. If you don't know how to, or if you don't have Dash or Plotly, just click on the video above that is on the top right screen to um, that talks about a virtual environment with um, Anaconda. I show you how to install your own virtual environment and how to install Dash on it with pip install uh, so you can get started within 10 minutes. Okay, so we're going to use this. Make sure to open all these links under the video. Open them up where I pasted them so you can follow along together with the code um, so it's easier for you to understand um, what we're doing. Okay, so very important. What I'm going to teach you today is how to read API documentation. If I just showed you the code like a lot of people do and just explained every line and that's it, it will be hard for you to do API from different like weather or, 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 or news. Uh, but I'm going to teach you how to read API documentation here as well as how to create a web app so then you can uh, master this, this, uh, this knowledge and you can do this with other APIs. So the platform that we're going to use today, I think it just updated again, so I'm still excited about this. Uh, the platform we're going to use today is Alpha Vintage. Alpha Vintage, uh, if you click on the about, you'll see that it's um, it's it's a uh, it's used for researchers and engineers and business people like us um, that. To, to provide us with free API um, and real-time uh, data on the stock market, on, on foreign exchange, or whatever you want. So let's go back. Okay, so the first two things you want to do is first you want to create your own API key. <laughs> create your own API key by clicking on this. Once you click on this, this will open up. Just put in here your uh, who you are, an investor or whatever. I think I put uh, student, organization, I, th I think I put whatever. Put your own email in there um, and then uh, get free API key. You'll get it immediately. I don't even think you get an email, uh, but they need one. So put whatever and then you get your API key. The second part you want to click on is the documentation. So go back. Go the documentation, and this will open this tab. And this documentation uh, tells you all about how to start um, using your free API key to download data into your uh, web app, Python script, or wherever you want to download it to. You can see they have four different categories here. The category they have is stock market, stock time uh, uh, data. They have foreign exchange data, cryptocurrencies, and all that. Uh, we're going to focus on the intradata because intradata is the most interesting data uh, I've seen so far. Um, and pretty simple to teach, so I'm going to teach that. It happens to be the first link, and it shows you all the different API parameters that you can use inside the link in order to create this, um, in order to retrieve the data from the API. And they give you a simple link here of how to do it. You see here they're telling you that uh, this link here is function is time series intraday, which is what we're going to use. The symbol here is going to be IBM, and the interval is going to be every five minutes, and it's going to be a demo API key. I'm going to copy this. Um, copy link and just put it into here so when you actually 
do well you have to I think you have to change this from demo put your own API key in there or maybe with a demo it would work okay this is a demo but if you want a different API if you want to use your own API key just put this right here and you'll get um, you'll get the same information but with your API key and if you want to change the symbol from I, uh, IBM just change it to Tata Motors and oh well the demo doesn't allow that the demo you can only do with IBM okay so perfect we have that um, with uh, uh, with the link. However, I, I don't want to do it with the web browser. I want to do it with my own Python script, with my own web app. So I'm going to have to have to find a way to do it uh, via uh, Python and not via this simple web browser. So how do we do that? The easiest way to do it is to use their own um, library. They created their own GitHub free open source library, Alpha Vintage. Um, and 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 follow documentation and explanation in this library. All right. So open this link. Um, you can also click on this Alpha Vintage and open a new tab. And inside here, you'll see the different uh, categories that you can choose from. We're going to do intraday inside time series. So just click on time series, and that's going to lead you to the to this this same link that I shared in the in on YouTube. So I'm just going to close this. So this is the second link, right? which we'll go into later. So this is the first thing, uh, basic uh, documentation on how to how to uh, connect to your API, to the um, uh, Alpha Vantage API, to your uh, script. So let's scroll down here a little bit. I'm going to go through this, um, but if please pause, read this before you see this video or before you see each section. Just pause me so you can get a better understanding if I'm going too fast. So the first thing you want to do is pip install alpha vintage if you don't have that. So let's see how we do this in the code. Open the code below the video and take a look. All right, so the first thing we want to do is we import all these libraries, even before alpha vintage, import these important libraries, pandas, poly, dash, that we're going to use. Um, and then if you don't have pip install, just do this once. Cook pip install. Um, going to your, I'm using Atom um, IDE, but just going to ID and just click here. Um, uh, pip install, let me see, let me just do this for you, uh, control, stop this script, and inside here, we'll just do uh, whatever it was called, pip install, um, vantage, blah, 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 and then hit enter, and it's going to install that, uh, that documentation, oh, that, that library. After you install that library, I did this. Now, why did I did this code? Because this is what the documentation told me. I just follow their rules. They said their guidelines from Alpha Vintage, time series, import time series. Why am I importing time series? Because remember, time series in the documentation is that's where intraday exists. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to do intraday stock uh, information. And that is also in this second link here. You'll see get intraday inside the time series class. So in other words, I'm in, with this, I'm importing the time series class. All right. So this is what I did here, import the time series class. And then I'm going to set up my initial key and financial category. So my initial key is going to be um, this. I'm going to obviously erase this after this video, uh, so don't get too smart with this uh, access key. And I'm going to put it inside the time series class. Let's see. Um, this is, again, in the documentation. After we import a time series class, you want to use the class time series to use the key argument so you, can, you put your own API key that you just created inside there. Okay, so we did that here. We're putting that in there. I also added output pandas. Now you didn't see it here, but you'll see below if you read more about this. There is four different arguments that's wrap uh, that you can add inside the time C series class. You have key, you have rapid a a API, you have retries, output format, and you have indexing type. So I'm going to use. Uh, I only need output format because I want to output as pandas. The other options you have is you can output as JSON or you can output as CSV. So please feel free to play around with it. Output as, as CSV if you want or output as JSON and, and then just print uh, TS to see what happens. Okay. Okay. So we set up our initial key and we set up the financial category, which is a time series. And now in this section here, and this is only for example purposes because we, we're going to put it in the app below, we're going to pull the data from the API and prepare it for plotting on the line chart in Plotly. So all of this section here, I'm just going to 
run the script once and then print, I printed all of these so you can see what I'm doing. But the first thing and the most important thing in this section is that this part, the get intraday. So this is actually where we're getting the data. This is actually the request. Uh, don't forget there's limited amount of requests with a uh, free API. So go back here, you'll see number of APIs. I Google this uh, for Alpha Vintage. Uh, you can only do five API requests per minute. So don't do it like every three seconds. And you can only do 500 per day. So if you do more than that, it's just going to block you and not allow you to do more requests. I think I'm doing every three or two minutes here. So this is the most important line. The, this is where we request the data, get intraday. And this comes from the documentation again. Where is it? Where is it? Data frame structure, you'll see down here, right here, get intraday. And then all the, uh, all the arguments inside intraday are all these. Now, if you want to read more about these arguments, go to the second link. Remember intraday, the time series, alpha vintage time series dot, uh, dot pi document. And and go uh, go into the the first one is going to be the first method is going to be the get intraday is inside the time series class, and here, here are all the arguments and these arguments are discussed here what each one of them means. So the symbol is obviously the the stock market symbol. Uh, the interval is how often do you want how do you want the chart to look like? Is it going to give you intervals of one minute, fifteen minutes, five minutes? This is not how fast it updates. It's just how how uh, how that chart looks like the interval of the data that's going to give you you see here oh we don't have that here um, and then you have output size compact or you can do full i don't want to have so much data so i just did compact so read over this play around with it and try different things inside your your uh, intraday um, so i'm going to choose ttm because that's tata motors i'm going to choose one minute intervals it's going to give me on the chart and the compact is going to be the, the size of the data. I'm going to just make a copy of this because I don't want to play around with the original. Uh, the data. I'm going to make a copy of the data. Remember, this is a tuple. Read, read this documentation that I prepared for you. Um, this is a tuple of, 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 of uh, two data points. One is uh, the data and one is the metadata. We'll see soon what the difference between each one of them is. I'm going to make a copy of the data and then all the rest of this here. I'm not going to go over line by line because it's going to drive you crazy and bore you to death. But I'm just going to print out so you can see what the difference is because I'm preparing my data to plot on Plotly Express uh, using the Plotly library. Um, um, so, so this is what I need. So let's, let's see how to do that. Uh, let's close this okay let's see how to do this okay so we printed everything out the whole section where i'm filtering the data and this is what we get so the first thing we're going to get remember here is we're printing the metadata so the metadata of get intraday for tada um, uh, symbol a stock market for the output size compact is this so you get this dictionary here uh, i'm going to use one of these uh, function um, dictionary keys below to put the title of the uh, of the of the graph, the line chart in the web app, I'm going to use this. But I don't need the metadata really, so we're going to move on. The next thing we're copying the data, we're going to uh, print out the, the the first five five rows. You'll see the top columns are um, open, high, low, close, and and volume, like we saw on the line chart. And then the in index is the date. So this is what we call a wide data uh, set. And Plotly tends to use long data sets. So I'm going to transpose and melt it uh, using pandas. So it's it's a long data set with the date with the date as the columns and the open uh, close and all these as the index. So the first thing I'm going to do is transpose, transpose, and then I'm going to print again. So you take a look. This is good practice as well. When you're home, try and print things a lot so you can see how things change. So now I transpose this, and this is how it looks. The date is still right here, on, but on top. And then these are the, the values on, on the left. So I'm going to also now re rename the index. So these are not called one, two, open. I'm gonna, just going to be called something else. Where is it? And I'm going to reset the index here as well before I print, because I want to rename the index indicator. All right, so let's see what that is. Indicator. So now the index is called indicator and it's still a little bit messy because the date is here on the left So we've got to fix that a little bit and what we're going to do We're going to melt but we're going to put all these dates It's like a hundred dates here that are like a hundred different columns We're going to melt them so they're under one single column using these arguments inside the melt uh, pandas melt uh, method 
And what happens after I do that, and after I take out volume, because I don't want the volume indicator, that's too big of a number, and I'm not interested in that. If I do this and end here, this is what I get. A nice index of indicators, open, high, low, close, open, low, high, close, that repeat themselves based on the date, which is really the time, 53, 57, 356, 354, uh, five, and then the and then the rate for each and every one of them. All right. So we now I'm using Plotly. If you use Seaborn, if you use something else, even with Plotly, you can probably use the wide data, how it comes like this, like the general, the the original data, how it, how it's pulled from the API. Um, so you might not have to filter it this way. Play around with it, see what you want to do and how you want to plot the data. Um, but if you need to plot um, plotly and the, create the line chart, this is what you need to do for this type of chart for this tutorial. All right, so let's close this. Okay, so now we are going to see how we're actually building the Dash app. All right, we connected everything to the API, we pulled everything from the API intradata, and we put everything into uh, our pandas data frame, which looks like this at the very end. And now we have to plot all this into a line chart and put it into the web app. So let's get into it and see how we do that. To do that, please hashtag this out all the way up here, all the way right, right here, right? Hashtag this out. This is only for example purposes. We're going to copy paste all this below. It's I already did it for you inside the, the, the app function. Uh, leave this the way it is and then just unhashtag all this because this is to create the app. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is um, is uh, uh, initiate the app like this. And then we're going to create the layout of the page. The layout of the page is going to have only one section. It's going to be the graph section. It's an empty graph to be populated by the line chart later. And it's going to have the interval, which is invisible. You can't see it on the, on the web app. And this interval allows you, it's, it's, it's what you are going to use to tell the app to update every couple of minutes. Here I say every two minutes because it's 120 times 1,000 milliseconds, which is two minutes. You can change this to update every four minutes, five minutes, or 10 minutes. Just make sure you don't update it too fast because, or too frequently because you only have like five times a minute and I think 500 times a day. So don't pass that. Um, if you want to learn more about the, the interval, created uh, a, a tutorial on that so you can learn all about how to manipulate the arguments inside the interval with dash. Just click on the video above. Okay, so we have our graph that's empty for now, but what we're going to do, we're going to create a callback that ties all this information, all this input information, the intervals, into a figure, and that's where you create a new figure. Okay? Um, I, I don't want to make this video too long, so I'm not going to go into output and input and how this works. If you want to see the basics uh, of how Dash works and what is output, what is input, how to create the, the, the function to output, return a line chart into this figure, just go into the pie chart video that I created above. This is the first video that I created on Dash, so I'm uh, a slower talker on that video, and I, am, uh, I explain in a very simple and detailed manner how all this works. So I'm going to assume you know all of this, or most of, of, of this, how to make the callback and the function work, so I'm not going to go too much into detail. But um, click on the video above if you want to know exactly why this is written this way. Okay, so I'm taking the intervals. I, I created the callback to take the intervals. And I'm going to say every n interval, which means every two minutes. I want the app to, to do something, to return, to return something. I'm going to return a line chart here that I'm going to build inside. All right, so the only thing I did is... I actually copy pasted all this. You see, all this was actually above here. We already did this. All this is actually right um, here, right? Yes. Yes, all this was actually right here. So I just copy pasted this. I took out the printing because I don't want to print it a gazillion times. I took those out. I just left this printing at the end. And I just copy pasted it into here because now we know it works. 
Now I don't, I, I verified this, uh, the, 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 the information that I'm pulling is the pandas information that I need, so now it works, so now it's inside the function, so it's pulling the intraday uh, symbol and, and times, and it's going to print it just so you can see, and now with this information that I have, this line after this, this df is actually, actually this, right, this is the last part, so I have this index and I have this uh, columns, uh, indicator is actually the, the, the column I think, and now I'm going to plot everything into a line. Um, if you want to learn more about the line chart, this is very simple, but you can go into my video above that talks about how to create a line chart using Plotly more in detail. But here we're just going to need these four different, five different uh, parameters. The data frame, which is the DF, which is this one. The X is the date. Actually, let's, uh, let's activate it so you have it. Okay. Okay, um, uh, we're going to do the x axis, which is the date in the line chart. The y axis is the rate. Remember, the rate is right here, the rate of each line. And then the color is going to be the indicator because we're going to divide the lines into the four different indicators that we have uh, in this in this indicator column. All right. Um, let's actually copy paste this into our web browser. So now you'll see only up to four o'clock because it stops at four, the stock market here in New York City. You see the line chart all the way from 2.30 because this is compact, so we don't have too much data and not from 9 a.m. And then we go in here and you'll see that they all ended up, it doesn't always end up this way, but they all ended at four at 4.86 rate with these line charts. So there you have it, guys. We created the line chart. We tied it to the API. Um, this is your own web app that you uh, are, were able to create with me. And now you have uh, automatic data that comes to you daily, every two minutes, on any stock market symbol that you would that you would like. Um, if you like this uh, video, please hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe below because every week I, I uh, post a new video on a new thing that you can do with Dash and Plotly and different cool data visualization um, apps. Um, but stay tuned because right in two seconds, we're going to go over the practice session. All right, so the challenge I prepared for you is this. Look up the Zoom stock market in your uh, web app uh, the stock market symbol and get the daily data. So in other words, what we want to do is this. So instead of plotting the Tata Motors stock symbol, uh, plot the Zoom stock symbol on a line chart with these, uh, uh, I think it's, it has the same uh, data as well, but do it using not intraday, do daily. Okay, do the daily one, uh, which you can see down here, how you want to do the time series daily it gives you all the all the functions here and you can actually also see it right here there's also get daily right here okay so try and do that try and plot the zoom data on a daily basis and not intraday and play around with the arguments so you can do different things i'm going to on the comments below i'm going to give you an example in the code of how this is done but try and solve this on your own before you actually look at the solution because it will help you practice um, i hope you enjoyed have a great, wonderful day.